you can um, you can cut <coughs> because um, in the future you're going to see many weird people like so many weird people some some people you'll see work differently okay uh, maybe you too I do not know all right yeah. <laughs> yeah especially in the, in this in this in this class um, okay um, I I kind of um, read a lot last night because uh, because so many people ask me a lot of things so actually I, I kind of slept no I stopped working quarter to six that's when I finish my work usually I'm fine I'm just uh, I just need sleep uh, like like a few hours three hours is fine but of all the day of all the day my, my brain take the this time to process thing you see when, when I was your age I, I had trouble to um, you you have to undergo many lectures right in a week who can remember all it's important it's almost impossible right to to remember not only for that but one semester to remember even after one semester right so i i have that kind of problem as well um i just but i never um skipped classes i just attended attended all the classes just make my 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 eyes fixed to the lecturer just listen did i remember no maybe i just remember five percent of the thing but there is something in my head that i just noticed kind of acting weirdly it will pick one day maybe a few months later or even years one or two years later it will replay everything all at once i didn't know i i, I still remember these things so when it replayed usually i will shut off because it is so heavy so imagine this is another reason why i don't like to drive because it can happen anytime so my student they know why i don't like to drive okay if it happens during i'm driving i'll just completely shut off what do you think happened yeah 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 yes it's kind of it's kind of like a uh, subconscious yeah but the good thing is <clears throat> that will only happen for for a few hours but when i wake up Let's just say I'm the smartest people on the on the whole planet because I'll, I'll just I'll just remember everything one thing and just I'll just just manage to connect all the dots. Yeah, yeah. So different people they work differently. So for me it works that way. Okay. All right. So we got uh, the second microphone. Uh, where is it? <coughs> so today, um, turn on. Cut that way again. Chasha. Um, is is it going to interfere if I talk to this and this thing listen as well? Interfere though. Uh I'll talk far far away from me. Like this thing facing that way. Yeah. Um have you prepared all your questions? Okay, let's 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 finish this in, in one hour. Okay, so um, one question you will come, pick it up. I'll just answer everything, but please speak to the mic because we we want it to to, to be clear of the good quality. Um, okay, all right, ready, ready. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Yay! <coughs> go go. Give the question. Yeah. Somebody, uh, the, the owner, please uh, read the question. <laughs> you know what? To, 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 to make it effective, just give one, uh, one person each the, the question. Yeah, it doesn't matter whose question is it. Uh, so that the microphone can, can move from one person to another. Uh, quick, we don't have lots of time. 
Okay, people have two soalan. Pasti ada two soalan. Oh, people called it. This is digging my own grave. <coughs> Cepat lah. Okay, jaga, jaga, jaga. Okay. Sebelum uh, tu lah. Semai. Yeah. Soalan dia berbunyi daripada Masita. Tak payah nak cakap. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Baju soalan. Yeah, go, oh. go, go, go. Okay. Fruit related question. Example of durian. Fruit have a large seed, but the content are so thin that it look took at the seed. So, what is the solution to thicken the content? You mean the top? The feeling of the durian. Okay, you 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 want to have more thickness. Uh, the pop, the pop content. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. Um, actually, that is determined largely by the genetic because durian is divided into septum, chamber, right? No matter how much you can increase the content of the pop, it is bounded by the size of the individual septum or chamber. Okay? So this depends largely on the genetic because some durian, one fruit can have five chambers, meaning that there's only so much pop that you can get from each chamber. Some durian can only have three chambers, some varieties, so you can have more. So this is largely governed by um, uh, by, by by genetic, okay. So if you have, if you want more, uh, find durian with fewer number of chambers or septum for a given fruit, okay. Cool. Mm. Next, yay. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, what's the next question? Uh, uh, it's not late. Is, it, is it on? Make sure, make sure that it's on. Uh, yeah. It's in Malay. Uh, it's in Malay. Uh, speak something which is not in Malay. Uh, so remove the question, okay? If you have okay. read, uh, if you have read it. Yeah. Uh, how can trees that live in autumn season to photo sizes? If not, uh, how they serve it? Sorry. Uh, say again. Uh, how can trees that lives in autumn season to uh, photosynthesis? Mm -hmm. And if not, how they survive? Okay, so the question is, how can plants or trees photosynthesize in autumn if they are not photosynthesizing? How can they survive? Is that the question? Okay. <clears throat> in autumn, in, we are in tropical, okay? So, there's no autumn. Although we have a condition called wintering, meaning that the, the leaf, like the rubber, rubber tree, heavily drop the leaves, okay? So, in autumn, since the equinox, 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 um, around... 23rd of September. This is the beginning of the autumn. For the Northern Hemisphere, I'm talking about Northern Hemisphere now, like us now. The light progressively becoming shorter and shorter every day, number one. Number two, it also becoming colder and colder. Not necessarily, but that's the general trend. Okay? Even though during autumn, the leaves changed color to bright, lush green to yellow or red, doesn't mean that it, it cannot photosynthesize. Photosynthesis still happen as long as the leaves are intact in the plant. Okay? But the moment the leaves drop, okay, because that's the end of the autumn as you know it, Photosynthesis is not happening. So, this time, two things happen. Number one, the, the plants 
because it now has entered the winter time, it's going to be even super cold. Um, uh, it, it will be in what we call as a dormancy, dormant condition. The plants sleep super low metabolism. When you sleep, do you need to eat? Yeah. So when you don't have to eat, like in plant, when they do not have to eat, they do not have to get around producing food. Okay? So um, if they have a good food reserve, they can last for the whole winter until the spring come back next year. Okay? That's how it works. All right? Okay. Does that answer the question? All right. Good. Yay. That's super easy. <laughs> Uh, go on, go. Okay. How does coconut grow from the seed? How does coconut grow from the seed? It grows from the seed? The embryo is in, in, inside it. Whatever you see outside of the coconut, that is pericarp. That is the husk. That is not the embryo. The embryo is when you remove the husk, you got the coconut, the brown ball, right? That's not the embryo. It's inside. It's inside. It's actually, um, if you see one side of the coconut, if this is coconut, one side of it, you're going to see something like that. Yeah, yeah. So the embryo, if you if you enlarge this, it's somewhere inside here. So in the in here, you got your all your coconut water, coconut meat. So this is will be the endosperm. So this is the embryo. The moment the coconut husk has cracked open, allowing water to get in. This will activate the embryo. This embryo will wake up and use all the food reserve inside the endosperm. So it will start to grow. And guess what? It will exit from these holes. It will become the shoot. And some will become the root. Yeah. But this will take a very long time because coconut husk is very thick. That's why it can travel not from one city to another city, from one continent to another continent, get through the water mechanism of dispersing, right? Okay. What? You need to know, to know the name. I, you don't know, no, no, then you ask me how. Oh. Mm. Mm. Are you referring to coconut sponge? Wait. I just I just want to to, dub, to double check something. Very quickly. Ah, oh, okay. All right. So, um this 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 thing actually is part of the endosperm as well. This is this is this is the food uh, for the growing embryo. How, however, um, the content of this um, sponge that you see inside, the content is not the same as this um, and the watery endosperm. Okay, so you have this sponge mass. I forgot the name. Then you have the water. Then you have the meat. 
the coconut meat. Each of these contains um, different nutrients composition. Okay, so uh, they just give food, provide food um, for 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 the uh, for the embryo. This sponge, the sponge head, uh, they, they they do not present since the beginning. It kind of came in later. Okay, um, I'm not sure for for what reason um, exactly, but um, just just. Did, did you know that the, the coconut water eventually they will be gone? They will be gone, right? They will they, they will be gone. Yeah, when they're gone, in 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 the coconut water, there's so much nutrients. Okay, some of these nutrients will actually be converted to this sponge. Okay, um, I I'm sure there is a physical uh, mechanical importance uh, for for it, but but I'm not I'm not I'm not sure why, but um. At least it's, it's for the fruit. Think of it like a placenta in baby. Yeah, yeah. During in the womb, the baby needs it, right? But what happens when the baby is delivered? It's still attached to the baby, the sponge. The, you know, placenta, the spongy thing? It's still attached to the baby. Will, will it contribute to the baby growth once the baby is out? No. So eventually it will be cut off. Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. Hope that, that answered the question. All right. Yay. Yay. <laughs> read, read, quick. Uh, if the durian tree blooms heavily, but only few succeed in becoming fruit, so now do you make sure the flowers succeed in bearing fruit? Are there any fertilizer or hormone that can be used? Um, so, uh, read, read again. Quickly, just, just quickly. If the durian trees blooms heavily, but only few succeed in becoming berry, eh, becoming fruit. So now, do you make sure the flowers succeed in bearing fruit? Are there any... Uh, do, do, do what? Uh, do you make sure the flowers succeed in bearing fruit? Do I make sure? Do we make sure? Are we talking about the durian or are we talking about us? I don't know. <laughs> huh? What? What? I, I don't. I don't quite get it. So, um, some of the flowers get fertilized. Only some become the fruits. What happened to the remaining flowers? I. So uh, we have flower, but not all the flowers become to become a fruit. Okay. Now we want to increase the success of sage. All the not all the flower, but increase the percentage of flower become a fruit. Oh, that you have to ask the bats to come in. Yeah. Because um, durian flowers, for that I know, they they are receptive they are active meaning that they they are fertile at night so much of their flowers are pollinated by bats anything fl flying at night okay bats moths uh maybe nocturnal wasp okay it's it's about all pro probability okay but what you can ensure the success rate um to 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 increase is um, this is why um, fertilization is important because there is another properties of the flowers that can increase the success rate. This is called flower of uh, uh, flower setting, flower set, meaning that the the flower it is um, of good quality to the point. When the bat or the insect is done with one flower, it will go to the next flower to get all the nectar. Sometimes you just see that the flowers are blooming, but that's not of good quality. Very soon it's going to drop, it's going to fall. So there is no fruit. All the flowers are infertile, meaning that they're not going to give rise to any fruit. The reason flowers not not fertile, sometimes because during the critical time of the flower development, they do not have enough micronutrients like 
um, calcium, boron, this kind of thing. So during reproduction, giving um, micronutrients, trace elements, is very encouraged, okay, to, to improve uh, the flower structure and viability. All right? Okay. Good. Okay. What are the main factors determining the source capacity and leg legumes crops at flowering stage? What can I just say? What? What are the main factors determining the source capacity in le legume crops at flowering stage? What capacity? Uh, uh capacity in legume crops. So uh, at flowering stage, to increase the flowering. Uh, the main factors. Uh, the main factors determine the source capacity in legume crops at flowering stage. Um, ah. get it, get it enough. Can the? It's just like uh, he asking about the main factors that determine the source capacity. In legume crops, at yeah, sources can be very, very huge. Source capacity, what, what source? I don't know. Nutrient source, water source. At flowering stage, is it like that? I don't know. This one is from um, mom. Is it? That, I'm, I'm afraid that that question kind of. I'm not sure. So, uh, to to ensuring to determining the source during during flowering okay. stage. Uh, <laughs> Next okay. question. Okay, next question. Okay. Next question. Next question. Next question. That's, that's kind of uh, unclear. <laughs> you see, this is also a sh to show you when you ask a question, it needs to be clever as well. Yeah, yeah if people don't understand your question, how are, are you going to get answered? Right. Okay. Okay, ni kepasa Melayu. Ah, tak apa. Okay, kenapa penyakit virus um, related dengan pokok ni susah nak dirawat? Virus bukan living entity. Virus is not a living entity. Number one. Meaning that a, sim a, a simple solution to pathogens, living pathogens like microbes, protozoa, nematodes, simply not working with virus. Because to start with, it's not a living entity. It's just a case. A case containing genetic codes. That's all. And then floating about, okay. So that's one thing. Number number two is because the rate of replication is super high, more than what the um, organism body can handle with, because it just send the instruction, okay. It send the instruction to the host cells to replicate more of this virus, okay. So this mode of action, creating army first make virus super hard to deal with. It's not like bacteria. It's not like other pathogen. They just come, attack, put in all the toxic stuff. If they succeed, that's it. If they don't succeed, they'll try next time. Okay? Virus is not like that. They create army first. They create army. Even the, the organism are not aware of this. To the point, the army is so big, it has started to colonize and wreak havoc in the body. And that kind of too late, right? It's the same like us in human. All right? Okay? All right, answer the question? Yay. All right, next. So <coughs> uh. uh, Soalannya... Uh, LED merah, uh, merah biru atau LED putih, mana yang sesuai? Sesuai untuk? Uh, untuk uh, penanaman pokok. Okay. Um, blue and light LED. Eh, kalau soalan kejap, kalau soalan tu bahasa Melayu, kenapa aku cakap bahasa Melayu ke? <laughs> Uh, kita nak kita nak bagi uh, uh, dapat soalan jawapan, jawapan untuk rakyat sebenarnya tapi tak apalah um, merah biru clearly lah that's the energy that the plants get um, in terms of energy blue is usually 420 to 440 nanometer 
red is around 650 nanometer. Okay. White maksudnya full spectrum. Semua warna ada dalam tu. Apa yang bagus? General uh, rule of thumb. Um, kalau ada warna putih, if, if, if you are using the white LED for, for the growth, this plant usually, this, this light usually good for slightly longer growth period kind of crop. Yeah. For, for, for example, uh, if you want to get indoor tomato, in, indoor um, uh, eggplants, something like that. So you need a wider uh, spectrum. Because this, this mimics more of the actual sunlight in the outside, right? But if you are growing rather a short period kind of uh, crop, like lettuce, you know, salad, salad kind of species, blue light of around 300 micromole is enough. Yeah, yeah. Why waste the energy more, right? Okay, so uh, it depends on the crops. Yeah, and it depends on the organ of harvest that you want. Right? Okay. <coughs> Does that answer the question? Yay. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, come on, come on. Alright, the next question is, Stomata tends to close when CO2 uh, increase. How do we reconcile that with plant growth increased by CO2 fertilization? Okay, stomata close during CO2. I, okay, right. The second part of the question? How can? Conciliate. Con conci? Conciliate. C-O-N-C-I-L-I-A-T-E. Consider it. Consider. Reconciliate. Uh, reconciliate. Okay, Re read it. Read it across. How do we reconciliate that with plant growth increased by CO2 fertilization? Wheat plant growth. Um, um, can you clarify a bit? Apa nak tanya tu? Reconciliate. Reconciliate. Your question. Um, so what? Uh, does the does the question make a statement when the CO two is given the plant becoming weak, and then how to rectify that? Is that what the question is asking? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, there is, okay, there's an answer for that actually. There is an ongoing uh, experiment throughout the world. Actually, it is not of good advantage to give the plant high CO2 for the entire time. Number one. Number one, do not give the plants high CO2 for the entire time. Only give high CO2 during early vegetative period okay not only that this will prevent the plants from weakening but it will also save cost because co2 is also a cost in agriculture right if you want to to increase it okay so give it at early time during vegetative growth maybe like okay let's say that you have an okra right okra or eggplant um this these uh, crops you can harvest during what 60 days 70 days after sowing, so maybe you only give the high CO2 the first two to three weeks of the life and then cut it off. Cut it off and this will prevent um, the, 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 weak, the, weak, the weakling, the weakening of, of the crops associated with prolonged CO2 exposure, right? Okay, that's the answer? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, go on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, here's the question. Can you imagine eating all fruit every day and any time? That will be awesome. But why does the fruit have its own season? Why don't it produce at the same season like it, like um, all, all the fruits, bad fruits? So you can, you can notice that some fruits are seasonal, some fruits are non-seasonal. Why is that? I don't know. Why? Why? Okay. 
number one is partly because of the what we call as microclimate. Okay, some plants, in order to shift into reproductive phase, it will require what we call as critical growth conditions. These critical growth conditions can include things like temperature, light, and humidity, and also the, 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 the water availability in, in general. There certain times of the year, these critical conditions can be met. Don't, don't care about the climate change and so on. Let's take, um, for example, durian. Durian, usually this is the, the season, right? So, the flowers that happened much earlier, during the, uh, during, uh, earlier this year, about, about three, three months ago, what was the condition like during that time, three months ago? Humid, right? Um, actually, it's not entirely rainy. It's, it's rather, um, how do we say? Um, there is a distinct dry period. There is a distinct dry period. And this, this is important because if, it's, if it keeps raining all the time, the flower cannot set. Okay? The flower cannot set. And if the flower cannot set, how are you going to get the fruit? Okay, so the plants have committed some kind of memory into, into its, its body to know, okay, this is the time of the year which is good to produce the flowers because producing flowers and producing fruits, you need lots of energy. And they know after the distinct dry period, this is going to be followed by a uh, copious amount of raining. Okay, so if you want to read further about that, some uh, about the season, this is what we call as the phenology. That's 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 the study. Phenology is the is from the word phenomenon. Logic is the logos. Meaning that you you study the phenomena that happen in the plants according to the time. Okay, so that's the phenology. Like sakura blooming. Why sakura only bloom um, during uh, March and April? Sakura, you know sakura flower, the cherry blossom? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So that's phenology. Right? Okay. Answer the, that, answer the question? Yeah. Yay. All right. Next. 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 Uh, pass, pass the mic. Can you pass the mic? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. What's the question? Bang, baca dulu bang. Okay, okay so alam dia berbunyi. Kenapa hasil aquaponik lebih bagus di USA berbanding di Malaysia? Hasil apa? Ah, uh, ditanya tekan di sini. Hasil aquaponik di, di USA berbanding di Malaysia. Okay, that's that's very broad. Uh, hasil hasil apa tu? Okay, uh, aquaponik basically you grow your plants in conjunction with rearing aquatic um, 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 uh, animals like fish, uh, crabs, or shrimps, prawns, that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing about aquaponic is, um, this, actually this is something that I just uh, realized uh, quite recently. Um, plants, crops, cannot entirely rely on the aquaponic wastewater, okay? It, because it only gets so much of the nitrates, the nitrogen, but lacking in micronutrients. So one way to improve the productivity of aquaponic crop um, is by applying foliar fertilizer. And this foliar fertilizer con contains all these um, elements, trace elements, which are not normally present in the aquaponic water. 
So because remember, plants can receive nutrient from two ways. It can receive the nutrient from the roots, root uptake of water and nutrient, and also can receive the nutrient from the stomata through foliar uh, fertilizer application. Okay, so give some foliar, and then you also have your uh, wastewater rich in nutrient. So the plants will be happy, and you will get higher produce of your products. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Um, how we can make the fruit ripen faster while it is at the tree? Um, dry climate. Definitely. Some You'll be surprised by this. Some trees, actually, some um, horticulturists in Japan, they, they grow um, a mango in the glass house. Yeah. And their mango is not like our mango. Their mango is, uh, is, uh, looks rather red. Okay. Um, the thing that they do to um, uh, fasten uh, the, the ripening is to reduce the water. Okay, to reduce to reduce the water because um, for some reason if if you, um, you you kind of like give the signaling to the plant detach the baby fast mommy is dying <laughs> kind of that the concept not only um, reducing the water will make the ripening faster but it will also make the fruit sweeter yeah yeah so. This combination of uh, effects achievable in the controlled environment system, but in the actual field, open field, um, you can you can in, uh, improve um, ripening, but it, at the cost of small fruits. Okay, can you apply um, artificial ethylene? Yes, we can apply artificial ethylene. There, there are products uh, for that. But that's not something that people usually do, okay? Because uh, ripening, when it's too fast, the farmers will have trouble to handle with so many fruits at one time. So they want it to happen in batches, okay? So I think the more appropriate question for that is to control ripening, okay? So that you can plan, okay, this batch I will deal in January, this batch I will deal in February, right? So that uh, will give a better management to the farmers, All right? Answer the question? Good, yay. Yeah. All right, next. Come on, come on, a few more, a few more. That's very easy. I thought people were going to ask me something like, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, why, why the space so black? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go next on. question, does climate change has any impact on plant? to produce secondary metabolites, which is active compounds, and how that could be? Um, climate change change everything. <laughs> Definitely one thing, okay? Um, one effect of, one of the many effects of climate change is high CO2. The, the, the content, the concentration of CO2 increasing with time, okay? So what does that change? That definitely making the plants to produce more leaves, but the leaves contain less vitamins. That's for sure. Okay. So with the climate change, with the increasing of temperature, increasing of um, um, CO2, <clears throat> in some plants that you see, they are producing more leaves, more ve uh, vegetative biomass, they will suffer from nutritional perspective okay they will have le less um, micronutrients like iron and zinc and also some vitamins okay so for regions that undergo um, climate change in terms of uh, high temperature the plants um, simply will start to create uh, more uh, Actually, it's not a bad thing. <clears throat> you know, when, when plants are stressed, they create compounds in, in the body to protect it, especially antioxidant, 
like vitamin C? Yeah. So some plants, actually due to the harsh condition, they will have more vitamin C inside. And when you eat it, that's actually good for you. Yeah. So um, not everything about climate change is, is bad. But when you get too much of one thing, it's kind of an imbalance. And you don't want that. Yeah. Climate change do change the secondary metabolites um, in, in, in the plant, but it's, it varies okay? from crops to crops and also to issues to issues because the climate is a big thing, right? Does that answer the question? All right, yeah. okay, so good. Yeah. Yay. <clears throat> okay, the next question. Does the shape of the leaf influence the process of photosynthesis? And what about non-flowering plants like cactus? Uh, say again? Does the shape of the leaf influence the process of photosynthesis? Mm -hmm. And what about the non-flowering plants like cactus? Ca for start, cactus flower. Cactus do flower. H have you not seen cactus flower before? <clears throat> do you know pitaya fruit, the dragon fruit? That's a cactus. That's a cactus. All right. Cactus do flower. But the, the, the first part of the question, do the shape of the leaf uh, have impact on the photosynthesis? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because some, some leaf, um, they have actually... Um, it has to be in combination leaf shape and also leaf arrangement the phyllotaxy because leaf shape and leaf arrangement will have impact on the what we call as radiation interception how much the plant can intercept the radiation because think of it the, the reason plants have the leaf as broad as it gets is to capture as much sunlight as it can all right so if the plants producing fewer area of leaf, leaf area, this will have impact on the radiation interception and the plants cannot photosynthesize a lot. It will result in plants which looks rather smaller and um, just not, not happy in, 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 in general. Right? Okay? All right. So does that answer the question? Yay. Yeah. Yay. <coughs> Okay, for the next question, mm. plants need to breathe, although they do not have a lungs and mouth like humans. What? 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 Plants need to breathe, okay. although they do not have a lung and mouth like humans. What is the best way that we can do to help them breathe? I don't get the, the first part of the, the question. Uh, can you say it clearly? Uh, uh, what is the best way? What is the best way? Okay that we can do to help them to breathe to have who plan plan, plan. plan. Uh, say, say again so, so what the, the plants do not have what is the best way that we can do to help them to to, to help them to help plant plant yes, plant, plant. plant to help plant to breathe to, to breathe the plants are already breathing uh, means that to increase their uh, respiration. Uh, okay, there is there is one actually. Um, uh, when 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 plants, um, you see, this is called leaf suffocation. When plants in in the urban area, like in crowded city, it gets very dusty. Okay. It gets, it gets, it gets, it gets very dusty. So um, you see, plants have the stomata on the, on the leaf, and it also has the pores on the stem. So in in dusty city, in um, contaminated city, when it gets so dusty, it will suffocate the plant as well. Meaning that the stomata kind of plugged in. It's, it's clogged. It's clogged, so the, the, the gas exchange cannot happen um, properly. 
All right. So what you can do uh, um, here is um, actually there is there is a solution that you can spray to the plant to unclog this. Okay. So most most plants on the planet, this is not a problem. But plants in big city, this is the problem. So what people do is people spray it with some kind of um, surfactant. Yeah, yeah, some kind of surfactant so that the dust or anything clogging the, the plant can get unclogged and the plant can breathe pro even uh, more properly, right? Okay, does that answer the question? Yay, yay. Yeah, your question, all right. Does that, does that, is that the question? Is that the question? Uh, <laughs> Uh, is hello? that the, the answer that you, you, you're looking for? Yeah. All right. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. If you have indoor plants at home, wipe the leaf. It's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wipe the leaf. Yeah, wipe the leaf. Wipe the leaf. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, next question. In Malay, pokok ada sistem pertahanan macam badan manusia ke? Plant immunity, yes. Ah, itu je. <laughs> yes, plants do have immunity system. You just learn it. The salicylic acid, that is one of the plant um, immune response, actually. But plants do not have blood like you, like you. Okay, so it, it doesn't produce specific blood type like uh, white blood cell, uh, basinophil, eosinophil, those kind of stuff, to what of infections, but rather they produce chemicals. Okay, they produce chemicals to attack the pathogens, or to some degree they just kill the tissue. Necrosis, apoptosis, this kind of thing. Okay, all right. Okay, is that all the question? No. Oh, last. All right. Okay. Last question. Go on. Hello. What is the role played by ATP and NADP in plant? Uh huh. What is the role played by ATP and NADPT in plant? Ah yes. NADPH in plant. Isn't Thank that you. the kind of question I should be asking you? <laughs> you this this just asks the question back. Easy as this. You and plants share something in common. Both you and plants have ATP. ATP, think of it like the energy currency. Okay, adenosine triphosphate. Okay. NADPH. This is specifically present in the chloroplast. You, you don't get, do you don't really have this? Do you have chloroplast? No. Yeah. NADH, that is present in the mitochondria, which are present in both human and also plants. Okay. So while ATP is the energy currency, so ATP um, helps with phosphorylation, meaning that the addition of phosphate group to any chemicals. Okay. On the other hand, NADH or NADPH, these are um, reducing compounds. Okay. Because they add hydrogen to any other compound. When they add hydrogen, they actually add more electrons to the, uh, to the compounds. So these compounds that receive hydrogen from NADH, uh, they now become reduced. Reduced, okay. So, um, if you, I think maybe, maybe may, you don't have the heart condition, right? Maybe you have parents uh, who are taking, I'll give you one, one real life example. Parents who are taking stat statin drugs. Statin drug is the drugs um, used to, um, to counter the effects of high cholesterol in the body. Okay, so when you take these statin drugs, 
uh, it kind of make the, the body metabolism, resp cellular respiration haywire. Okay, so um, to counter this, some people they take uh, this thing, co enzyme Q10. It's like a vitamin like substance. Okay, so when this thing is present a lot within the mitochondria, a lot. When you have this, you basically you have endless supply of energy, which is good to counter the side effects of statin drugs. However, this coenzyme Q10, if you go to Watson, you go to any pharmacy, they have lots of this on the shelf. You can check coenzyme Q10. This thing comes in two forms, the oxidized form and also the reduced form. In this oxidized form, it is called UB quinone. Very cheap. Eat more to get effects. And there is another type called uh, reduced type UB quinone. Expensive. Expensive. Eat less. Yeah, yeah. So it's pretty much like uh, this. This is what why it is important to understand the concept of oxidized and reduced, because this will also help you in determining what supplements you want to get. Yeah, not not for yourself right now. Maybe you want to help your parent. Now you understand. Okay, uh, your parents need to eat uh, coenzyme Q10 because they kind of uh, you know not having lots of energy, very uh, dreadful. So you want to help them. If, they if, if money is not of the question, better always give the reduced form. So NADPH is the reduced form, pretty much like this. It's got the H, H attached to it, the extra electron attached to it. When one electron is missing, it becomes the oxidized form, pretty much like the ubiquinone. Okay? Both of which you can find in uh, the pharmacy. I, the the price difference is, is quite quite um, different. Like this can be like thirty ringgit. This can be like hundred ringgit. Yeah, but that's more important. All right. Okay. Is that all the question? Yay. Yes. Last one. Ah, uh, di barat mereka menggunakan CO2 generator di rumah hijau. Adakah perkara itu memberi kelebihan? Uh, CO2 di rumah hijau Ken Kenapa nak generate CO2? Tak <laughs> the, the good answer High CO2 helps the crop But you will increase Your co production cost At the end of the day How much one kilogram Of tomato you want to sell? <laughs> right Yeah if money of no question, increase everything. Yeah, but if you um, like, you know, premium fruits, premium vegetables, whatever you put the premium, the elite kind of label, go for that. But if you, if you want to create an economic kind of agriculture produce, better don't. Better don't, okay? You know what? I, I would say, you know, from from getting CO2 generator fixed in, in the house, better put fan. Improved circulation actually can be as beneficial as, you know, providing extra CO2. Because plants, if you put the fan, all this oxygen produced by the plants, when they are in the vicinity a lot, plants kind of not happy about it. But if you have plan, uh, fan, remove all the oxygen, the plants will naturally be happier, right? Okay, so good science can save a lot of money, surely, right? Okay, that's all. Yay! Yay. Yeah, all right, okay. Uh, so I think that's all for, for this semester. I hope you have had a good time. Yay! Yay. Yeah, you have... Uh, one assignment left to send to me and also your lab report you need to send as well. Okay.
yeah yeah please please do so a day before your um yeah yeah i know okay and i think it's going to be online uh, they have not decided it but i think it should be online yeah yeah all right okay uh, i think that's all so uh i'll see you around when i see you hey bye <laughs> <laughs> all right okay cool <coughs> so uh, I'll, uh, I'll i'll see you later then all right you got you got class right yeah i need to go as well yay 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 all right okay